Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and all the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta. I'm trying out some new AirPod microphone to hopefully help with the sound quality. Uh, so please don't mind the little white things sticking out of my ears. Um, and I don't know about you, but I must have funny ears because AirPods or other wireless headphones, earphones, don't like to stick in my ear. So if I have to like give them a little nudge from time to time, I apologize. It's just that I don't want them falling out. <laughs> um, okay, I think we're good. How are you? It's the end of July and we have had a busy couple weeks around here. It's finally been hot and muggy in Alberta and we have been uh, enjoying the air conditioning in our house. <laughs> um, Oh, it helps to be able to sleep at night, doesn't it? We had a couple of girls playing soccer last weekend, which was a super busy weekend. We were back and forth to the soccer pitch um, constantly. I think all weekend we had eight games, which is quite a few. And uh, one girl got bronze at our provincial championships and one got gold. So we're very proud of both of them. They played really well. And uh, both teams got the um, Fair Play Award, which means um, they got the award for best sportsmanship, which to me, uh, that's such that's such a nice thing to see your kids rewarded for being good people, <laughs> especially in a sports environment. So that was really, that was really, really nice. And that means I had a ton of time to knit. Um, last time, I think, the last time we spoke, uh, I was just about to start on a sock sprint challenge through the Woolly Thistle, which is a yarn shop in um, eastern the eastern United States. And they were hosting a knit along where you had to knit or try to knit a pair of socks in two weeks. And boy, howdy, did I. <laughs> um, I managed to squeak out a pair of men's size socks, so 76 stitch in my case, socks uh, in one week. These are the socks that I knit. I use the Cozy Knitter um, Advent Calendar yarn that I had left over from 2020. I find that Advent Calendars, when I get the 250 gram uh, skeins, I can make two sets of, or two pairs of socks out of those, um, out of those 250 gram skeins. And so I had one left over and uh, I knit this pair of socks um, for my husband. Again, 76 stitches. I used some Knit Picks Stroll. This is called Midnight Heather for the heels, cuffs, and toes. And I just did an afterthought heel. So I knit until I had knit 24 stripes. And then I did a toe. And then I did the other one, same thing. So these are a little bit, they're not really tall socks. You can see where the heel is for my husband. Uh, but they're not exactly shorties either and uh, I'm hoping that he'll wear them a lot, but it was really nice to get them off the needles. It was nice to get that little 50 gram skein out of stash uh, and to participate in a fun challenge. So knitting um, a pair of 76 stitch socks in t a week is, is pretty impressive. And I pretty much put everything else aside just to knit these socks um, pretty monogamously, but I'm quite happy with how they turned out. And those I think will be going in the Christmas gift basket. Um, as a way of getting ahead of myself. The other uh, thing that I managed to finish in the last couple of weeks was a pair of socks. Turns out when you watch as many soccer games as I have watched in the last couple of weeks, you can get a lot of knitting done, especially when they're close games. I find if I'm nervous or uh, anxious, I will knit faster, especially on socks because I don't have to look at what I'm doing. So I managed to finish this pair of socks. These socks are knit from um, mustache yarns in their Vespa colorway. I had knit a pair of socks like this for myself uh, a couple of months ago and I had some extra yarn. I didn't want it to go to waste. And one of the moms um, that I know from soccer, she has daughters who are on both the same, uh, she has an older daughter on my older daughter's soccer team, a younger daughter on my younger daughter's soccer team. So I see her a lot <laughs> and uh, she admired the colors. And so I knit her a pair of socks. This is great timing because I need to drop off some soccer jerseys and some socks at her place later today. So these were the Vespa socks. Again, very plain. I didn't do anything fancy with these. I used some West Yorkshire spinners in their milk bottle colorway for heels, cuffs, and toes. 
and uh, I'm really liking this as a contrast color. For a lot of um, colorways, I'm finding that white is a nice contrast. And so I have another pair of socks off the needles uh, and going into my stash dash tally. And finally, I have one other thing off the needles and that is my Inclinations cowl. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, but it, it's not without its, uh, it's not without its foibles. Uh, I didn't quite have enough yarn to finish off doing as many decreases as I needed to do to get the two sides to be the same. So I had to end up a little bit short, which means that one of these edges that I seamed together was shorter than the other. And because I had to graph them together, um, I just used some creative creative stitching. This is all mattress stitch here. And so what I did was uh, every once in a while, every two or three um, pickups on the side that had more rows, I picked up two rows at a time. And I just kept sort of doing that slowly up um, the seam until I had reached the top. And I couldn't tell you how many times I did that, but I had, I had blocked out this whole cowl prior to seaming. And I find that really, really helpful for a couple of reasons. You can tell the finished size and dimensions of your project, so that's helpful. And also the stitches stretch out and sit in place nicer. So it's easier to see where you need to pick up the stitches, especially when you're doing mattress stitch. Um, so in the end, it's a little, it's not quite, it's not quite the shape it's meant to be, but when I put it on, I don't think you can tell. And I think that this is going to be a great accessory for fall. I really love the colors. This deep burgundy is something that I really wanted to incorporate into this, um, this, let me back up a little bit. I wanted to incorporate a deep burgundy into this project. And I really like the contrast. I think this will be really wearable, especially under a jacket, um, because it is cozy, but it's not too snug so that you don't feel like you're being strangled. So I'm really happy with my Inclinations cowl, and I would totally recommend this project to anyone. The pattern stitch is quite simple. You're doing, um, on one side, you're doing a Knit One Pro one, and the other one, you're doing knits. Um, and the thing that makes the pattern is that you're picking up the stitch below, but Andrea Mowry is excellent at giving um, tutorials on all of her stitch patterns and various projects. So if you're interested, I would totally recommend this. Also, I think it would be a great gift. You could knit it out of easily a couple of skeins of fingering weight. Um, if you have some oddball uh, skeins lying around, I use two skeins of um, DK and I managed to squeak out a rather nice um, cowl, but um, just be aware that mine was a little bit shorter. So if you're trying to uh, knit one out of DK, keep that in mind. And that is all the finished objects I have this week, which is actually pretty good. Two pairs of socks and a cowl is uh, not too shabby. I have been cranking out some socks as well on my sock machine. I won't bore you with those, but um, that progress has slowed down a little bit because I need to skein up some more or cake up some more yarn. And I just haven't felt like doing that in the heat. But soon, because I have big plans. Uh, first, I wanted to show you uh, the one work in progress I have for right now. Um, a couple of weeks ago, or a couple episodes ago, maybe, I started the Ornata blouse. And sadly, in the last couple of weeks, it's been set aside so I can finish some of those socks and the cowl. But now I'm back in full force working on the Ornata blouse, and I'm at an exciting point in its progress. So... Um, if you remember, I had cast on, I separated the sleeves and was making great progress. And actually on camera, I think you can see that my attempts at helical knitting to uh, vary the, the color so I'm not getting pooling have been working really nicely. Here's the back. So that's going really well, which is nice to know. <laughs> I have this much left in the second skein of my main color yarn. I should be using three skeins for this project. Ooh, sorry about that. Uh, and I am, let me show you, just about ready to bind off the ribbing. So um, I'm at the ribbing. This 
pattern has two options for uh, the bottom hem. One is a folded hem and one is uh, a quite severely gathered ribbed hem. I chose to go my own way <laughs> because I didn't, oh, this is a, meant to be a blousy blouse, which I like, but I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of how gathered the waist was. Um, you do some pretty uh, significant decreases before you hit the ribbing. And I didn't want it to be so gathered at my waist. I would prefer something that fell a little bit more straight. So I opted to just do one by one ribbing and it will come in a little bit as you can see, but I think that it'll be um, closer to the kind of fit that I'm looking for. So I'm at this point in my journey with this much left. My plan is to finish this round of one by one ribbing and then do a sewn bind off, which is a sewn tubular bind off. But having said that, I am super excited to be at the point where I can start working on the sleeves. The sleeves are, um, almost entirely color work with some beautiful, I'll, I'll insert a picture here, with some really beautiful um, color work that mimics Ukrainian embroidery. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that. And I think that that color will, will really make the sleeves fly by. So I'm really looking forward to that. The contrast color I have for my embroidery or color work is this, falling apart cake of a lovely blue color. <laughs> it's called Midnight. And I, I do like how tonal it is, how how much variation there is in that blue. I think it's gonna be really pretty um, as the contrast color. So I'm really looking forward to starting that. And that is all of the projects I have on the go right now. But I have, as always, big plans. Um, as you may or may not know, Andrea Mowry comes out with a new sweater knit along for fall for knitting season or festival season. And uh, this year is no exception. Her sweater is the Alpen Glow, which I'm gonna post right here. And when I saw it, I was super excited and decided to dive into my stash and see what I could find for coming up with this sweater pattern. Um, I was pretty successful. I found four skeins of this um, yarn by Biche et Bouche called the Le Petit Lens Wool. So it's a light gray for a main color. Um, the color work in this sweater is done with um, some dyed in the wool by Spin Cycle. And I found two skeins, which is just what I needed, of a color called Leaf. These were bought in a sale a year ago, two years ago, and they're seconds, so they will have some knots in them and some irregularities, but I knew that going in and I think that's just fine. So there's my main color, there's my contrast color for the body, and then this color has, or this sweater has a couple of different colors at the yoke. So I found a nice fluffy farmer's daughter. Um, this is her Odang base, which I really love. It's Siri Alpaca Silk which I find, um, I find mohair kind of prickly or itchy on my skin, but I do not find that at all with the um, Surya Paca Silk. So this is a color called Highway Man. And so I think you can see that that will ooh, blend in quite nicely. And so this sweater calls for one more color around the collar. And so I'm looking into getting one skein for this sweater. Everything else is from Stash. And I think I'd like a deeper gray color to uh, to accent and to sort of ground the sweater. So that, that deep gray will occur at the neckline and at the cuffs. So this is my future Alpen Glow sweater. Now there is going to be a sweater knit along with for Andrea Mowry that starts on August 22nd, which is great. I've got all my yarn or should have all my yarn by then. Um, and so I'm excited to get that started, but I think I might have some time in between finishing my Ornata blouse and starting the Alpen Glow sweater. So I was stash diving again. And I have sweater to or enough yarn to make the Easy V sweater by um, Boylan Knitworks. Ooh, that was a close one. Um, which in a completely different color palette. So I think I'm excited to have a couple of fall sweaters. One in this sort of cool blues and greens and then one in these really warm pinky peach tones. 
Uh, so I'm excited to get started. For the main color of this one, I have some dyed in the skein, which is the same as dyed in the wool. It's dyed by Magpie Fibers. It's the same base, which is super excited. And then you can pick some of the Magpie colors. I had purchased some Bougie, bougie Beaver. Um, <clears throat> I purchased some Bougie Beaver um, when this yarn came out because I wanted to give it a try. I always like trying new yarn bases to me. So I got this thinking this would make a nice sweater. I have four skeins. And then when this um, pattern came out, I went stash diving. I found this Yarn Hero, which is a DK. I had purchased at Stash when I went uh, in the spring with my daughter. This is a, co a color called Canyon. So I think those two will be nice together. And then I also had, again, from that same um, second sale, I bought some Mississippi Marsala. This is quite a variegated, which I like that it's got warm and cool tones in the same skein. So I think those will all be fun together. <laughs> and then I needed one more skein and I picked up two skeins of this Nostalgia, which is also dyed in the wool to make a really warm pinky peach kind of palette with a bit of cool tones. Uh, I always find sweaters or designs that blend cool and warm tones really interesting to me. I really like that. So um, I sort of have done that here with some of these cooler and warmer toned skeins and I look forward to making this into an easy V. Now the easy V sweater is uh, written for worsted weight yarn and I plan on knitting it in sport weight. This is a conversion I've done in the past. Uh, so I'm pretty confident that I should be able to do it no problem. I'm going to have a look at some of my previous um, projects where I did this sort of conversion from uh, worsted to sport and see how I did. But um, basically I just, my dog is very interested. Uh, basically I just took my gauge um, which I was smart enough to write down and um, came down to a needle size that is more appropriate for a sport weight. And then had a look at, compared my gauge and how many stitches I would need to get the size that I wanted. And then I looked through the pattern to find a size that had that many stitches in the body. And I worked that sweater size for stitch counts. And I worked the sweater size that I was aiming for in terms of length. So from here to here, that length, for sleeve length, for body length. I'll go into more detail on that as I get ready to knit that sweater and cast on. And so you'll hear all about it, I'm sure, in future weeks. But I'm excited to have some new sweaters on the go and uh, planned. But I do have to wind up a lot of yarn. <laughs> um, so that might be a job for me this weekend. I'm really excited to be um, having some time off with my family in the next couple of weeks. We are going to be going on a ho little holiday uh, and I'll tell you all about it when I get back, but I do have some holiday knitting planned, uh, mostly socks because they're super portable and easy to carry, but I, we are doing a plane ride. So I think that I might take one of these sweaters to work on on the plane. Um, so that's exciting too. How are you doing? But how are you filling your summer? Are you finding inspiration in Knits for Fall? Or are you uh, enjoying other pursuits right now? I am not a gardener. I sort of, part of me wishes I was, um, but it's just not something that interests me terribly. But I am super excited about my apple tree and all of the apples that are growing on there right now. So in the fall, I'm sure you'll hear all about my apples and my apple adventures. But if you um, are a lover of apples as I am and have some favorite recipes that you'd like to share in the comments below, I would love to hear. I think my family's going to get super sick of apple crisp. And I'll probably make some apple sauce, but if you have some great ideas, I'd love to hear about them. And um, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I hope that you're enjoying crafting, whatever that is for you right now. Um, if you like, please like and subscribe to this channel so that you can hear about more videos that I have coming up in the next couple months. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. I hope in the next couple of weeks, you have time to do all of the things that you want to do.
I know I plan on knitting a lot. Bye.